the cannabis conundrum. This is a puzzle that I'm trying to get figured out. <laughs> if you can figure this out, you know, you get a dollar. But we have all these different groups and everybody's pulling in the opposite direction. And uh, if we could get everybody to start working together, it would turn into one of those like cybot things. But we got like we got patients, a lot of medical patients want their medical marijuana, but they're not really in, interested in hemp and they don't want marijuana to be legal. So they're off on their side. Hemp farmers, you know, very, very conservative. They don't want, they're not even into, met, a lot of them aren't even into medical marijuana and they definitely don't want marijuana legalized. So, you know, they're pulling <coughs> off in that way. Then you have people like growers who, and dealers who are making money on prohibition because the price is so high. So they, they don't want it to be illegal, so they're over there. And then you have parents, which you know, most of you have, and uh, they're hypocritical in a sense because they're not, I don't know how many parents are cool about marijuana use or not. My, my mom's not. So we got two hands, so we got a few. Oh, nice, nice. So, I mean, that's a really good start. And, uh, but unfortunately, parents, you know, some of them, they feel like they have to be hypocritical because they don't want to don't want to give you the bad idea that you can smoke pot without going crazy. So, you know, they're pulling this way. And then you have teachers and professionals that can't come out of the cannabis closet because <coughs> they're afraid that they're going to get drug tested. They might lose custody of their children. They might lose their job. So it's really, it's really hard. They, so all these people are pulling in different directions. And even within the activist community, unfortunately, <coughs> we have way too many infights, you know, even between like groups like Normal and MPP and all these different groups are, seem to be fighting, and even within Mass Can, sometimes there's a lot of tension. So, you know, we need to figure out why we can't all just get a bomb. That global marijuana march, by the way, oh, is yeah. happening this year, May 7th. Uh, it's coming up, and we're going to be walking around Boston, ending up on, I think it's the stairs of Congress, right? State House. State House. Nice. So, it's going to be really exciting. Then, if you're interested, fun Facebook. May 7th. It's May 7th. A whole bunch of us. You'll get to meet. Tons of interesting people in this uh, community. So. Including Kara. I'm sure Kara will be there. Kara will definitely be there. So if you're in a political science class, you know, look at the different, um, compare <laughs> different co uh, cultures, compare and contrast, like Holland. You can go to Amsterdam and go to any number of coffee shops and buy marijuana or hashish and just smoke it right there. It's just it's tremendous. It's the best place that I've ever been to several <laughs> times. So it's, um, you know, everybody's safe. You know, the thing you really have to worry about is the drunk Brits over there, you know, raising hell. But, you know, the people smoking pot are having a great time. It's just incredible. So look at that, and then you look at China or Iran where they actually kill people for smuggling. If they get caught smuggling, they'll, they'll kill you. And there's quite a few other countries that are like that. So it's just incredible. And then you can look at... Canada, more liberal, they got, they're growing hemp up there, they, they've been growing hemp for like 12 years now, and they have medical marijuana, and they have Vancouver, where it's very liberal, and Toronto, and then you have the United States, you know, why are we so different? And then even within the states, California and Texas, Texas is definitely conservative, and uh, California is, you know, hey, you know, a lot of fun and everything, so, <laughs> you know, study that, or even within California, you know, LA's, you know, happening in San Diego, just down the road, it's like, eh, you know, sit up straight. So, you know, why is that? Why, why do these political uh, cultures, or why are we so different? And just do not tolerate intolerance. If you take one thing home with you tonight, besides the lip balm. Um, communication and journalism, you know, if we have people out there that want to write, that want to talk, you know, we need, we need help getting the word out. You hear a lot of things on the news about essential fatty acids, the omega-3s and the omega-6s, how good those are for you and how good it is for your skin and for your brain activity. And, the, and then they inevitably say, eat salmon, eat fish to get your omega-3s. It's like, no, no, eat hemp. Hemp has a lot of omega-3s and omega-6 essential fatty acids, but they don't know that. So let the media know. We need, to, we need to give them some propaganda. We need to let them know. Write letters to the editor. We need to open the debate. One thing about the media, they don't want to debate prohibition because they know they can't win this argument. You cannot say patients shouldn't have their medicine. You cannot say 
farmers shouldn't be able to grow this crop, and you can really can't say <coughs> adults shouldn't be able to smoke marijuana in the safety of their own home in a responsible manner. I mean, you can't win that argument. But they don't, they won't have that debate. So we need to get on the airways. We need to get debates and try to, you know, educate people out there. <coughs> Read books. ERS has a uh, weekly show. I'm trying to, if Tufts has a week, any kind of radio show, you know, do a little hemp, hemp show or something. That'd be great. Legal studies prove that prohibition is unconstitutional. In my heart, I just know that prohibition can't be constitutional. But for whatever reason, the, the judges and the courts will not you know, change the laws. But we have to create a good enough argument to make them realize that the answer to every question I've asked tonight is, it's the prohibition, stupid. Everything that's wrong, so many things that are wrong with this country are because of the prohibition, the violence, pollution, obesity, a lot of these things could be addressed through hemp and cannabis. Join a group. We got SSDP here tonight. It's really great. Their SSDP is the, my favorite drug policy organization. I just, you guys are awesome. It's nice. Makes, You're me, awesome. makes me feel young. Thanks. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just good, you know, to see kids, young people that actually care about this stuff. Because when I was in college, you know, we were just fucking getting high and that's about it. So <laughs> at least you guys are doing something about it. And maybe you'll write a paper. And, but we didn't have the opportunity either. I mean, we didn't have, you know, SSDP back then. They, I think normal was, you know, sort of on the rocks. But now we got organization. We got normal. We got Americans for Safe Access. We have mm, mass patients. Mass patients. If you're a medical user or if you want to get involved, talk to Eric about getting more involved in the medical arena. And vote hemp. You know, they're out there lobbying for the hemp industry. We're trying to change the laws in that area. So we got that going for us. Which is that? Physics, math. Figure out the energy in a hemp seed. E equals hemp seed squared. You know, I mean, there's a lot of energy in this sucker. So figure that out. Do some analysis and, and educate, you know, see what you can do with the hemp seed if you can shoot it around the world or something. You know, make hemp, people are making speakers out of hemp fiber. The fiber makes really great hemp speakers. Develop a biodegradable phone out of hemp, you know, composites or plastics. Or if you're in the math class, study the asymptotic relationship of uh, marijuana use. And what that is, is like if you don't smoke very often, like if you're once a month or so, you get really high if you just smoke once a month, it's like a cheap date. And then, but if you smoke every day, you don't really get that high because you, so you know, you go way up there once a, once, a, once a month and this is once a day. So study that asymptotic relationship or even create a band called the asymptotes, which probably wouldn't work, but so study that or look at the, um, the differing risk profiles of dealing versus growing. You know, if you're, if you're dealing marijuana, you. You buy a big bunch of it and then you sell it ounce at a time. But if you're growing, you've got to plant seeds and your risk increases as those seeds mature and then you have that big thing to sell, but your profits are higher. So you could do some kind of market analysis on that, risk analysis if you're into risk. But um, this is a Hemp Industries Association in 2000 we, in a hemp field in, in Canada. So this is the only hemp field I've ever been in. I'm standing right here. With the, I'm holding that hemp stock, the one that's here. But anyway, so this is our, us out in the hemp field. Hopefully, we'll have a hemp field in the future of uh, America one day soon.